president of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity and chairman of the Campaign for Liberty. That's quite a title, Dr. Paul. Thanks for joining me. Nice to be with you, Jesse. Uh, good to visit again. Absolutely. Well, let's get right down to it, Ron. You saw the State of the Union address. Your comments on it. I picked out the part that I thought was the most threatening uh, to our system and our society, and that is when the president was not bashful and sort of wagging his finger at us and saying, and to the Congress, if you don't do as I tell you and do it quickly, I'm just going to issue an executive order. You know, they've been doing that for a long time, and, uh, you know, Roosevelt was the one that really abused his power, but it's been abused by both Republicans and Democrats. But I thought it was different this time because it was so blatant, it was so above the board. It's sort of like, you know, our country's been involved in assassinations for a long time, but they're sort of covert and secret, and we wouldn't brag about it, we'd hide them. But this president, he's pretty bold. He says, yes, I believe in assassinations, and we have a committee to study it, and we have kill lists. And I think it was sort of this attitude that he had, and this is when he was the most emphatic in that whole hour, where he sort of said, I will do something, I want action, you do it or I'll do it. I thought that was probably the worst part of the speech and uh, most threatening. Yeah, I think this is, uh, in a way, progress. It's not as test as much on him, because I think m most people are starting to realize what he's up to. But this is a challenge to the people. Now, the American people, just ignore it and say, well, he didn't really mean that. You guys are overreacting. Uh, and what will Congress do about it? Do you think the Republican leadership or the John Boehner's of the world will stand up to him? There are some members in Congress that will, but unfortunately they're still in a minority and they are not going to be standing up to him. I worry the fact that it's out in the open. Uh, yes, uh, give him a couple points for being blatant and honest with us. But boy, everybody else fails if they listen to this and say, well, that's not so bad. Uh, let a president uh, assassinate American citizens. Let a president go to war like both parties have been allowing without a declaration of Congress. Even on domestic affairs, if Congress doesn't act uh, as quickly as the president wants, then he will take care of this by repealing that provision that Congress is supposed to write the laws, not the president. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly correct on that, and I think you make a great point in saying that Barack Obama isn't the first to be doing this, that it's been going on for a long, long time. And it seems, as you said, it's getting more blatant now. They're right out in the open. Now, you know, it's getting shady. Do we really have three branches of government anymore? You know, and I think it all comes back again, like you and I harp on all the time, following the Constitution, following the Bill of Rights. I found it rang hollow when they started taught when he talked about closing Guantanamo. I mean, we've been hearing about that for four to five years. They're never going to close Guantanamo. Dr. Paul, do you think they will ever close Guantanamo? Maybe when there's a total bankruptcy and they can't afford it and there are nobody's to pay the guards down there. That's about when it will happen. But, you know, if we give the president a little bit of credit uh, for at least uh, saying uh, what he wants to do and how authoritarian he wants to be, wouldn't it be neat if we had somebody at the uh, Federal Reserve come clean and say, you know, this is what our real agenda is with monetary policy, is <laughs> to take care of all the special interests, it's to take care of our friends on Wall Street, it's to finance the wars, it's to, uh, you, you know, promote the welfare state. But, you know, don't hold your breath on that. Uh, I, uh, I would well, think it would be pretty neat. I've always, you know, Edward Snowden uh, came clean. Wouldn't it be neat if we had somebody really come clean and uh, be a whistleblower on the Federal Reserve from the inside uh, oh. rather than us? Uh, trying to figure it out from the outside. And the one place where they're the most resistant is uh, in the area of foreign affairs, you know, what they do with overseas. And they did a lot of it to the tune of trillions of dollars after the uh, bubble burst in 08. And that means they can pass out trillions of dollars to other central banks, other governments, foreign banks, and uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty powerful organization. Do we have a chance against them, or, or, or are we pounding our heads against the wall? Well, I wouldn't do this if I didn't think there was a chance, uh, you, know, be per, you know, be engaged in trying to get information out. But I don't do this as a politician. Uh, and, and that is the reason that 
my approach in Washington was different. A lot of people used to ask me, don't you get frustrated up there with all, that, all those people you have to deal with and you never get anything really passed? And I said, well, you know, I don't have a high expectations of ever having changed it that way. But my idea is trying to reach the people and change their minds, change their minds to reject Keynesianism, to reject the Federal Reserve System, to reject paper money, and, 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 and look to the Constitution. And that's where we're making progress. But I don't think we can have a whole lot of success until uh, they're totally discredited. But believe me, and I'm sure you're aware of it, there's a lot of uh, lost confidence in government. I think it's wonderful that people, they're not trusting our government officials. They believe we're being told lies. Ed, Edward Snowden now has not been uh, totally destroyed by the media and the government. And people are starting to recognize that they want to hear the truth. And I think their system is going to fail. Their foreign policy is going to fail. The monetary policy is going to fail. The welfare state is going to make sure that we go broke. And they won't be able to just keep passing out more food stamps. So it'll come to an end, and the big question is, what is it going to be replaced by? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, going on to the Snowden thing, I heard he got nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Is that correct? And I hadn't heard that. That's, that's, uh, I did an interview. Hope, but, you know, one thing is, is you have to question the Nobel Peace Prize. Remember our president, before, by the week after he was sworn in, he got the Nobel Peace Prize oh. before he had a chance to start a new war. Oh. So, uh, yes, I think uh, Edward Snowden deserves the recognition. Well, the thing I'm, the point I'm going to make on that, that could very well save his life. The fact that he got nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize because there was rumblings in this country I read some of it on the internet where there were people that wanted him killed. They wanted him put to death. You know, that they view him as such a traitor to our country and all this. And I think by him getting this nomination, it may very well save his life. Well, that, that's, that's hope so, but it's only been within a couple of weeks that I heard on uh, the favorite Republican news station that uh, they thought he should be uh, executed. Uh, and believe that he's committed treason. So it's still out there, and a lot of the people in Washington believe that is the case, but uh, hopefully public opinion will be swayed, uh, it will help sway uh, a different attitude, and I think your point, being nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize might help call attention in a positive way to what Snowden has done. Yeah, no, you know, to me, I mean, how can they sit and call someone a traitor who has exposed the government for the lying and the breaking of our Constitution. I mean, that is a hero, Dr. Paul, somebody who's willing to take on the U.S. government with the truth. They are spying on us. It's all true. And it's the classic case of them trying to kill the messenger, not the message. Well, you know, they uh, said that his crime was that he was turning over secret information to the enemy. But we have learned that he has not turned it over to the Soviet or the Russian government or the Chinese government. There's no evidence of that, and there's no evidence that anybody has suffered the consequence, but he has turned it over to us, the people. So maybe the government looks at us as the enemy uh, rather than some foreign government, and I think that is the problem. So we are, you know, a threat to the establishment. The truth is uh, treason in the empire lies, and they knew that, and that's why they're coming down hard on him. Oh yeah, they gotta make an example of him too. They wanna make an example of him so that there's no more whistleblowers like him. You know, I can see them doing that. And you know, when you said that, that uh, they're treating us, the people, like we're the enemy, I think you're exactly correct with that because they've got us all under surveillance like we're all potential terrorists, like Ron Paul's a potential terrorist. Jesse Ventura is a potential terrorist. We have to put all these people under observation and watch what they do and all that. So let's go to the future a little bit. I hear a lot of rumblings that your son Rand may make a run for the presidency. Is that true? Well, it's true that I've heard about that on the media and uh, people ask me about it, but uh, I don't have any inside information. Because my guess is that an individual, uh, you know, uh, like Rand, who has, is well known now and his views are out there, uh, my guess is that he probably has a ways to go to make a final decision. Nobody makes a decision so early, but uh, he's being asked that question a lot. And uh, I think uh, when you look at the other candidates, uh, it looks like he uh, 
could do a pretty darn good job. Well, you know, it might be kind of interesting if Rand does run, if he took his father for vice president. Wouldn't that be interesting? What the hell did you just say? Well, you know, it might be kind of interesting if Rand does run, if he took his father for vice president. Wouldn't that be interesting? Damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. You are goddamn gifted. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, he's been, on, been on the receiving end. You know, if you're out there out front and trying to change some views and uh, you speak critically of the government, like Jesse Ventura has and Ron Paul has on occasion, sometimes they come down hard on us. Now, lately, they've been coming down. You know, it's the Washington Post and the New York Times starting to hit them. So uh, maybe that's the indication that he's uh, positioning himself uh, rather well. Because those aren't accidents, uh, you know. Uh, no. uh, for a while, uh, when I was running, I was totally ignored. But eventually, though, as soon as as soon as the uh, primaries were about to start and the debates were starting, all of a sudden, oh, Ron Paul's uninvited. He can't come to this particular debate. So uh, if you're making uh, inroads, then you have to be ready. And that's one thing I'm sure Rand is uh, quite capable of realizing that uh, he, he has to expect, uh, you know, that there will be attacks on him. And I feel, one place where I feel badly about him is that uh, uh, he will be hit uh, because of me. You know, maybe some distorted viewpoint that has been thrown out there and then put him on the defensive. That's not, that's not fair and that's wrong. It's dishonest. They shouldn't do it, but they, they will do it. Yep. But also, I think he's quite capable of uh, deflecting some of those charges that are made. But, but you know, I, I, just don't, I, I just don't like it that he has to uh, suffer any consequences because of, of some misunderstanding uh, of what I might have said. Well, I'm, I'm sure Rand has his own mind, and, uh, you know, they're going to get him for what he says, too. But, you know, I would tell him this. My advice to Rand is you're obviously doing the right thing if they're paying attention to you. If you're starting to get publicity, that means they, they look at you as being a threat and they look at you as a player in the game. If they totally ignored him and all that, he would have more concern that way, I think. But just tell him to hang in there and weather the storm because uh, if they don't like him, they're sure going to come at him hard because you and I both know that, absolutely. But uh, I wish him well. I mean, to me, uh, everyone has a right to run for whatever office they want in our country, and they're, they're, they should all be treated fairly and equally when they do that. I used to laugh when I ran for governor because I, w I had been a mayor, and I was the only candidate that ever had his private sector job put in front of his name. I was never Mayor Jesse Ventura. It was always former pro wrestler Jesse Ventura, where then it was Mayor Norm Coleman and uh, Attorney General Skip Humphrey. And I always loved how the media did that to me. But no, if they're talking about Rand and they're writing negative about him, that's because they fear him. The status quo fears him and they're trying to marginalize him. Well, you know, if I was a well-known wrestler, I'd want them to tell me that because they probably figured a uh, wrestler might know how to wrestle with those politicians <laughs> and wrestle with those bureaucrats and confront them. So maybe it never hurts you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me something. Do you think that Congress will be more active this year? You think they're going to do anything or are we going to be stuck in this stalemate? And will Obama be forced to use his pen to do it on his own? Well, Congress isn't going to do anything. Let's just hope that we can stop the president. Because if they do anything, they're going to do the wrong thing. They haven't, uh, you know, taken their oath seriously. And the reason why you're going to have stalemate and it's not going to stop is they're out of money and they won't admit it. They haven't given up on the philosophy of big government. Uh, last uh, night, you know, when they had the uh, State of the Union message, the Republicans sat on their hands most of the time until it came to foreign affairs, you know, militarism. You know, they were up there clapping and cheering uh, all this. So they're, they're not going to cut back. It's only going to be the limit on spending. And so far, the world has been foolish enough to finance our extravagance. So they're taking our money, they're taking our dollars, and uh, we have a negative tra uh, a current account deficit. And as long as they're buying our debt, this is going to continue. But when the end comes, it's going to come quickly because uh, they are starting to question 
America's finances, and when they quit taking those dollars, uh, we can't raise taxes, uh, no matter what the liberals are saying, let's raise taxes and solve the problem. Uh, we, we can't do that. And then if they reject the dollar, we won't be able to borrow anymore. And uh, how much lower can you lower interest rates? Bernanke got us in the trouble because they were 1% too long, everybody agreed. Greenspan did that. Bernanke gets in, he takes them to minus 1%. So you can't, and Yellen, who believes that that is the answer, where is she going to go? So it's going to come to an end. I, I don't think there's going to be any agreements. If they do, it's going to be superficial, and it won't be to shrink the government in the real sense. But uh, ultimately, we have to change the whole notion of what the role of government ought to be. Ron, is Washington broken? And if it is broken, is that a bad thing? No, we want stalemate. Everybody worries about it. And if they're going to do the wrong thing, that's exactly what you want. It's, uh, it's broken because we're broke and they won't admit that we're out of money. Uh, and that's, the system is broken. Uh, and, and therefore, the two parties that agree on so much, you know, they agree on foreign policy, they agree on monetary policy, they agree on a lot of welfare uh, policy. They fight and argue over who gets control of the power, but they uh, basically agree on so many of these issues. But uh, the system is broken because we as a country, uh, we are broke. And if you don't have the money, you can't afford it. And that's very healthy that people are starting to realize. I think the symbolism of Detroit is very, very good and very instructive because they can't, they'd like to just ignore and say, well, that's an exception to the rule. But what if it isn't an exception to the rule? What if welfareism and excessive spending, what if Paul Krugman happens to be wrong? <laughs> you know, that all his theories are wrong and that he gave us Detroit. Well, that's a big deal, and uh, I think that's why they will say the system is broken if, if the members of Congress could just get the lawn together and agree on more spending. You know, when we were wealthier and our economy was growing, they got along fine because they'd compromise. I'll give you this, you give me this, and they kept spending, but those days are gone, and uh, that's why we're nearing that climactic end, which will be an economic crisis a lot worse than what happened in 08 and 09. Wow. That's going to be brutal if it's worse than that. Well, Ron, winding things up here on the interview, let me just finish by asking you, what's in the future for Ron Paul? Same old stuff. I've been doing the same thing, I figure, from the very beginning. Before I was in Congress, the first time I ran and every other one, it was always for the goal of promoting individual liberty. And I did it. I was out of Congress for 12 years, and, uh, you know, I had my various organizations, and I do my best. I, I see the problems as an educational problem, not a political problem. Politicians, you know, will follow a prevailing attitude by the people. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on this Ron Paul channel to, uh, you know, get information, get the truth out about uh, the, the various uh, problems that we have, foreign policy, civil liberties, and economic problems. And I'm also going to be very much involved in uh, trying to find those people who want to study early on and have their kids learn about the freedom philosophy. And that's why I've started the homeschooling program. And uh, that's getting underway and doing quite well. Uh, that's exactly what the progressives did. They got control of our schools. But now people are recognizing the school system is broken and therefore they're looking for something better for their children. And I'm very much involved in that as well. Well, Ron, keep up the great work. It's great to talk to you and we'll keep pushing forward with you on Off the Grid. I want to thank you very much. Dr. Ron Paul for joining me on Off the Grid. I'm on Tuesday through Friday on Aura.TV. And remember, people, be like Dr. Paul and Jesse Ventura. Stay vigilant.